This is the original eSport racing game. This is iRacing. As the rhythm of the bossa nova washes through the two-dimensional crowd that has come to Autodromo Jose Carlos Pache, it's time for the Global Sim Racing Channel's Round 10 coverage of the Advanced Mazda Cup 2019 Spring Season Championship. Followers of this series can't help but sense the anticipation thicker than Bajujua, a black bean stew so favored by Brazilians. In a bit of a stew of his own is Giannis Mumelidis, despite moving up into second, the Greek streak is still 100 points behind Sonny Catch Me If You Catch Him. In the championship with only this and two more races on the dock. But as the fickle finger of fate points toward Canchin, the crown could find a few heads to sit upon. You won't want to miss any of the simulated MX-5 action, unfortunately for you, the viewer. It can all be seen live as it happens right here on the Global Sim Racing Channel via the iRacing Esports Network. Hello and welcome to another GSRC broadcast. High up in the press box to bring you our words I view, Joe Peek. Joined by yours truly, Bill Soup's on. Sean Crackers Ambos has director duties armed with cameras provided by Dougie Beard. Joe with Suzuka now in the rearview mirror with hands 10 and 2 on the wheel. Ahead comes Interlagos. Tell us a little bit about it. Oh, formerly called Autodromo Jose Carlos Pache, or former, formally called, I should say, not formally uh, called. Uh, most drivers know this place is simply Interlagos. It's the uh, biggest event the Formula One Brazilian Grand Prix sees some of the shortest lap times on its schedule, but we're putting little, little MX-5s on these two and a half miles. Even though a big chunk of it is flat out, these cars can only do just under two minute lap times. And as always, long flat out sections means the draft is a big part of the racing. Uh, that bit, uh, the bit that makes the big difference is really the infield section. A large number of this track's 15 turns are part of winding, slow technical sequence that goes from Ferradura to the junction. Pull a gap through there and you might be able to break away from anyone riding your coattails. From what we've seen in the past, though, I, I think we'll likely see a lot of draft trains. Thankfully, we didn't have to deal with that on our lap guide, so let's hop on board the GSRC MX-5 and see it from the driver's perspective. All right, we've got Amjad Yaman in the GSRC MX-5, so let's do a lap around Interlagos. Coming down to turn one, the Senate S provides a great opportunity for an overtake, but attack and defense can be a complicated affair with the way the track falls away and switches direction. Regardless of the outcome, at the end, you're dumped onto the Curva do Sol, which is flat out in this little MX-5. And this sets you up for the next best place for a pass at the end of the Reda Aposta. This stretch will provide a good draft, allowing you to close in or even get side by side with your opponent. Coming up is the braking for Decida de Lago, and you really want the inside line to have a chance at getting by the driver ahead of you. The car will want to understeer as we head back downhill, and once again, you won't be lifting for a bit as the car slides its way through five. Drift it back to the left and get the car lined up for Ferradura. This double apexer is fairly fast, meaning it's going to be tough to force a two-wide situation. I wouldn't really recommend trying to pass here unless you're desperate. Thankfully, there's lots of paved runoff around the outside. Quickly, you're going to get on the brakes for 8, which kicks off the slow, winding technical section of the circuit. Each corner requires you to set the car up for the following one, so don't worry about maximizing the exit as much as where you position your car. These curbs are very wide and flat though, so feel free to use as much as you can. Now we hit the Pico de Pato, which is a decreasing radius hairpin. Late apex this baby, and then swing it across the track immediately for the best line through 11. Once again, the curbing on the outside is usable, so make the best of it for a nice wide entry into Junkau. Every drop of speed you can carry through this turn will pay dividends on your lap time and for the opportunity to pass into one. 
Without much power in the engine of the MX-5, this long uphill climb needs you to keep your momentum up. At this point, it's all about minimizing your steering input, or if you've got a competitor sizing you up, positioning your car for defense. Hopefully, you can hold them off in the braking zone, but as we come across the line, you finish the lap around Interlagos. There you have a lap around Interlagos. And now let's go ahead and take a lap around the point standings as well as there's only just a few more races left in this season. We'll take a look at it right there. Now you can see Kanchen has that 100 point lead. He has a 156 point lead. Uh, I'm sorry, Mumalitas has a 156 point lead when you take into account only the raw points. But when you do add in those drop races, remember these are a driver's best five of nine results all those four drops the four worst results have been taken out you see Ketchin with an even c note ahead there of mumalides but nevertheless if disaster were to strike uh there's enough gap there enough time for mumalides to get there mike dam also still in the hunt he's used up all of his drop insurance now as you see the zero by his name the fellow canadian david payton in third and jordy fike sitting down there well back but comfortably in fifth we're always picking up new viewers here on the iRacing Esports Network. And remember, the best of the best in the iRacing World Championship, as well as many top private leagues like the one you're watching right now, are showcased right here on the iRacing Esports Network. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you're a subscriber. GSRC is proud to be part of the IESN stable of broadcasters. And for all those new viewers just tuning in for the first time, here's Joe to talk about the event details. Absolutely. We have a 25 minute race today. That is their sprint format for this series. So obviously you're not going to see any pit stops. If you have to come into the pits, then you're probably not going to get a good result. Uh, the setups on these cars are open. So this isn't like the rookie MX-5. So you can try and find a little something out of the car, but it's more about comfort than it is about raw speed. They have an incident cap as well at 17 incidents. Drivers will be disqualified if they go over that. And they, uh, they score the points that Bill was showing based on the official iRacing points, which is calculated due to strength of field, which is usually pretty high, but today a little bit lower. We're uh, we're up against the iRacing Indy 500, Bill, and uh, even though you wouldn't think that there's a lot of crossover between these two cars, apparently it has drawn a lot of drivers away. The good news is for many of these drivers, it gives them a chance to make the broadcast as there is no second split here today. So a lot of new names are not familiar to see. And welcome to the show, everybody. What do we have here tonight? 17 drivers here. The big names are here, though. The guys that are fighting for the championship, Sonny Kanchen, the Greek streak, Yunus Mumalidis, and David Payton. In fact, Kanchen's currently got the provisional pole, and Mumalidis was trying to get ahead of him, but didn't go faster on his second lap. And now Eusebio... Uh, finds himself up on the front row. The bad news is Marcello, who we know is not slow, Bill, is still half a second shy of Sonny. Yeah, half a second. Although maybe that half a second is not as big as it really would be on a track that was more technical. Although, Joe, there are a lot of technical sections here. I, I guess in theory, Sonny maybe could break the draft as they work their way through those that technical part. Yeah, it, dep it depends on where he's finding the speed. And honestly, from what I was told by some of the drivers uh, in the practice races, the draft will be enough to get you up there, not necessarily pass. So it makes me wonder if the the strength of the draft won't be enough for that half second gap uh, for drivers to try and keep up. I guess we'll find out in a little bit of time as it is. The good news is uh, that it's pretty grippy conditions and it has been grippy conditions all week long. It's only 71 degrees on track, Bill. So we shouldn't see a lot of sliding around. If you're good with car control, then you'll probably be able to at least keep up with someone who is similarly paced. There we look at uh, car number 15. I might take a look at car number 14. Here's a new driver we haven't seen before. This is a fun one. Oh, he just, he was just here. I'll take a shot at it anyway. Yao Gabriel Albino Moroska. Uh, close enough for me. Yeah, uh, yeah. that's a new name. Well, no. Frederico. He has a two uh, by his name, so it means there, somebody yeah, else has the same some... name. <laughs> of course. Uh, Barrera is the last one going to complete qualifying, and actually that should be it, Bill. The results are in for the grid. 
Let's go to it right now. 16, 17 drivers here. I'll take the top 10. Sonny Kenshin and Marcella Isubio in the front row. Jonas Mumilidis, the Greek streak inside of David Payton from the second row. Roy Coimbra, Coimbra in the fifth position. Kotomiwa flanking him. Arturi Sarati in the seventh spot. Bobby Childs going eighth. Row five is populated by Ivan Garcia and Rodrigo Capilito. Joe? Lee Martin will be starting in 11th. Derek Holland qualifies 12th. Frederico uh, Barrera in P13. Then it's Kevin Shea starting in 14th. Joao Moruska that you mentioned a little bit ago starts 15th. Ricardo Gasparate in 16th. And Tyler Lugo Vickery starts last on the field. The only car not to be able to set a time in qualifying today, Bill. A lot of new names. Again, welcome to the broadcast. 25 minutes of racing, so if you don't have your snack already, why don't you just stay in your chair there and enjoy this one. This will be over by the time you get back from the kitchen. We fly over the grid, still waiting for a few of the drivers to take their spots. David Payton and Roy Kumba, a few of those. And we've got three Brazilians on the grid for this race, Bill. So there's a few people looking to do well at their home track. Little home cooking. Brought that up in the intro. A little black bean stew being served. Gather up the chickens, take cover on the cows. The horses are out of the barn. Sonny Kanchin is your leader. Isubio trying to chase right behind him. He tucks in behind. Mumalides, Payton. And then in fifth position, it's Coimbra. Already you're seeing a lot of cars get mostly single file by the time they get through the second part of the Senna S. You really don't want to lose speed coming down here. This is one of those fast, flat-out sections coming through Curva de Sol, down the Reda Aposta, into the Cita de Lago. Uh, and you might see some passes as the race goes on along this section. Those cars that are side-by-side side. back there, you saw that's Child and Capolito. Capolito's going to get the best of that one. Mumalidis spins off. He was going to be one of the best challengers to Kanchin, in my opinion, so this is bad news for him. I don't think he's going to be able to catch the Australian after that. He was in second. Right ahead of Marcello Isubio. Isubio was able to get around him. The good news for Isubio is he did not lose touch with the leaders. We saw this last time, Joe. Uh, Mumalidis got into trouble early. Yeah, he's really got to work on that. You got to be calm on your race starts and just keep your wits about you. Unfortunately, whoa, is, we got a challenge for the lead. And Eusebio's going to get it. I don't know what happened there with Kanchin. Gets around Kanchin. Maybe Kanchin realizes there's nowhere to go. No need to save fuel here today. There are no pit stops. So the number one drops back into second. Don't forget Peyton back there. He's keeping touch. He's last in a little three-car train that's broken away slightly. We're going to get a good inkling of what the draft holds because Coimbra is about half a second back. And already we're seeing Sonny trying to come back up to the lead a little bit. He's going to back out of it. Look at Peyton. Gets a good run as well. Peyton's got to be feeling good. At least I'm able to stay with him for one time around. Next passing zone will be after this twisty section through the Senna S. There's a long back straight. They'll go around three. And now let's see if anybody wants to make a move on anybody else. You can see that that did bring Coimbra up into the mix. So half uh, a second back to six tenths back. It is enough to bring you in as long as you stay that close. Uh, in fact, they've got six cars in that front train, Bill. The caboose is Aturi Surati number 11 machine you don't know much about him he's finished that's uh, that's already an inkling that he's got some speed underneath him front six cars remain in a lead line 1.7 seconds back to Ivan Garcia who starts the second train that includes Capolito child Derek Holland and Lee Martin oh and we've had an incident with Gasparetti and yeah, Mumalidis. This is I a think... fun one. If we can, if we can watch this one after the incident, stay with the director as they both return to the track. This is some synchronized lawn mowing here. I think this is a case of of Mumalidis did not expect him to be 
essentially breaking uh, or slowing down as much as he did into the they corner. Make, they make contact and they both know where they're going and oh, we're back out on the track. So that's going to be costly because you've probably got a slowdown penalty from that, did uh, Iwana. So uh, back up at the front and still Sonny it doesn't seem eager to try and get by Marcello. Not the case for Rui Coimbra, though, as he takes a peek on Peyton on the outside. That's not going to happen. Five car train now as Cerati begins to lose touch with the top five. Coimbra's looking racy, though. He's got a great launch. And we saw a little bit of a defensive move from Peyton, but it was too late because you can see Roy's already got his nose in there. He tucks back in. I think Coimbra probably wanted the pass, but it might come at the expense of losing touch with the top two cars. So he tucks back in line. Koto is, Mio probably happy with that decision. Absolutely. This is really smart racing from this group. Uh, the fact that we've seen so many opportunities to get some side-by-side -side action, but everybody's just trying to play patient. But again, we're... Uh, the fact that we're not seeing it, that the pass is going to be easily done, makes me wonder, though, because uh, if drivers are going to have a tough time trying to get by, you don't want to wait too long uh, and sit in that train. I'd say maybe about with a quarter of the race to go, it's time to start getting aggressive. Let's check in on that second train, starting with the driver in seventh, Rodrigo Capilito. He's being chased by Garcia. Garcia gets a little bit loose. I think he's going to lose a spot to Bobby Childs here. Childs will have some momentum. Nope, not going to do it. All that happened is he lost touch with Capolito. Yeah, that's a curved braking zone on your way into the Ducks, Bill. And it, it, it can be a little tricky if you're pushing it very that's hard, okay. trying to keep it straight. Kachin makes a nice, friendly pass. Going to go ahead and resume the lead again. Isubio didn't want any part of that one. In fact, he did it so early. We'll see if... Uh, Isubio wants to come back and get part of it. Here comes Peyton. Ooh, Peyton, though, is Gonna coming up. up the inside. And I think he's got second. Here comes Coimbra. He's thinking maybe that third is up for grabs. but And you're going to see he's off that second apex. He's going to lose a lot of time. And the only thing that's going to save him here is both the other cars were still side by side. So they're also losing time. And the big winner is now Sonny Kanchin. So the question is, is Kant going to be fast enough to run away from these guys? Asubio so says, wait a minute, let me get back up here and lead this train. Again, the fluorescent blue machine of Coimbra making a look on the inside of Payton. We saw in qualifying, Marcello is, is half a second off, according to qualifying pace at least. I don't know what the difference is in race pace. And he's already one second behind Bill. This could be tough for him to try and regain that ground. Yeah, he's going to need help from somebody, and somebody who's going to have to be fast. Maybe David Payton can get up there, and they can start leapfrogging their way down the front and back straights and close the distance. We'll see how that plays out. The gap, 1.3 seconds now, and growing between the Australian and the uh, Portuguese. And they're not done fighting behind them. Payton is having to fend off Coimbra. He keeps sticking his nose in here and there. It almost looks like they've given up on trying to fight for the lead and just try to get to the front of this train now and see what they can do up there. We look at that. Got to give a shout out to the driver in seventh, Rodrigo Capolito. He has left the second group behind and he's running right in here now. He is within shouting distance of Cerati in that lead train. He Ooh. swam up there all by himself. Marcello's 1.6 seconds back now. He's continuing to lose. This is the best news that Sonny Kanchin could have had. Just the, them squabbling, he's broken the train, unless he makes some sort of mistake or maybe they work together, I'm not sure that they're going to be able to, to catch him. Sonny with clear track in front of him. Nice battle going on as soon as we get off the onboard camera. We go to 8th position. Garcia just made a pass on Holland to get up into 8th position. This is some fun stuff going back here with Bobby Childs and now Lee Martin in the mix. A nice four car battle back here for eighth position. Yeah, Lee Martin just in that black car you see, kind of bringing up the rear, watching to see what's gonna happen up ahead of him. They're awful close though. Although looks like Holland isn't gonna make a move on Garcia quite yet. Garcia is still going defensive into Ferradura. It's, you, you're not even hardly breaking it all for this corner. So I'm not sure why he's fending it off. Garcia 
you'll see a right in the middle of the track. Folk Chrissy Hines, middle of the road, ain't no cul-de-sac. Can't get from curb to curb without some jerk on your back. Not referring by any means to Derek Collin being a jerk, but came up from nowhere there. Good racing going on for eighth. Absolutely. I'm seeing a wide variety of lines coming through the Ducks bill, and that could catch a few drivers out if they try to cut under someone. There's no room. But now look at Bobby Childs getting onto the back of Holland. If he gets a launch off of the junction, he could have something. Yeah, the racing back here is exciting. Everything holding steady up front. We ride on board with Bobby Childs. Looking ahead at Derek Holland, the veteran. Yeah, he swung a little bit too far wide coming out of the junction and that that long uphill it's critical in these cars bill that you get on the power as smoothly and as soon as you can because they just don't have a lot of power underneath them and so you need that momentum to get speed they just don't have the grunt a little bit of close here as uh Coinberg continues to peak on payton you can see the gaps there if you're when we're back in the back of the pack you can always watch the interval up top on that top line for a brief while coimbra was was working with peyton i saw him bump draft him a little bit ago it doesn't seem like it's panning out because you can see marcello stretching ahead to about 1.3 see if coimbra wants to help push peyton a little bit there maybe get back up to subio Top two have distanced themselves and they distanced themselves from each other right now. Hayden, 1.2 seconds back. We we'll really have to work to get back up to Marcello. They're not losing him at a high rate of knots, but it doesn't seem like this bump drafting that they're doing is, is working terribly well. So I'm not I'm not confident that the number three is gonna be able to get up to this uh, to second place. Look at him there as they come back. You can see the last car in line, though. That is Capoletto. He has found himself back up there. He's worked hard. A great battle going on between Garcia, Childs, and Holland. Capoletto drove away from those guys, and now he's racing with the big guys. I get the sense that Rodrigo may be his qualifying isn't representative because he went from 10th on the grid up to 7th here and could have more. I wonder if he just made a mistake on both his laps and cost himself some time. Childs with a bit of a run on Garcia if he wants it. I don't think he's going to force the issue. Get into the corner number one a little late. Those guys race for 8th, ninth, and 10th. Drop gets back a, to a... Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, sorry, Bill. He, he got a really good run through the Senna S, and well, here we go. I think Childs might be able to do it. This is the other passing zone. He's got a real good run now. In fact, so does Holland. Holland may want to be part of this one as well. He's got the inside. There goes Child. Got to be careful not to outbreak yourself because it's downhill th here through the uh, Decida de Lago and covers off Guy Garcia. That was a brilliant move. Bobby Childs is discovering the joy of cooking with hot fish grease. <laughs> Ah, you got a little bit of a love tap from from Garcia as the pass was made. Holland in the popcorn position watching on. These guys a second and a half up on Lee Martin who races in 11th, trying his best to get there. Boy, these guys are having fun though. Yeah, the guys up front all holding station. Go, Joe. You can see them trying those cutback moves where they're doing those different lines here through these sections, these tight turns the car can offer it up. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, you just really got to be careful that you don't clip that other car. We come up now to the final corner. They'll be back onto the main straight. These Childs might have the favor returned. Time. No oh, passing there's... going on on the front train. Go ahead, Joe. And Garcia's ducking out of the slipstream of Bobby Childs, and I'm not entirely sure why. He is blinking a lot, but he's not close enough that it's really that big of a worry for Garcia. Holland says, well, Garcia, if you're going to race over there, I might come in here and see if I can poke my nose in and get that spot. He's going to dive it in deeper than Confucius in a submarine. Holland gets it. Can he make it stick? He does. Nice pass from Derek Holland. 
He's becoming Ivan the Terrible at turn one, apparently, but he's going to try and take it back. And he's got a great run out of here, actually, and he might even get both the momentum that I'm seeing for him. Oh! Oh, no room there. That was a late move. Garcia gets Holland only. These guys continue to be the show. They're not done yet. You gotta be careful about those moves where you you interrupt someone's momentum like that. I I know I'm probably a little bit more old school and more polite, but uh, it's both risky and to me just a rude way of racing. And Garcia's gonna try and do it through here. Look at this. Child's out in front. He's okay. He's got the line. He's in. You don't need to go now. You can. Where are you going out onto the grass? That's not going to work. He's going to lose momentum. But look, he gets to the inside. What do I know? Wow. Ivan is not going to sit down for this. But look at the horrible exit it gave him. He came in so shallow. He almost was going to lose it back. But I think Bobby is thinking what you were thinking. Wait till here. This is where it's going to be made super easy. Derek Holland is a veteran watching all of this. Says, we don't need to race this way, guys. Let's go up to six real quick. This is Cerati being challenged by Rodrigo Capolito. Capolito has run these guys down. He's not going to be able to get this position. I can report, though, that look what's happened up front. The Subio has been paid and ran him down. Now they brought it back together, but it looks like Cerati and Capolito are losing touch with those ahead of them. So they might drop off of this, uh, what was it, a seven car train? Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's go back. My spidey senses are tingling. Let's go back to eighth. Making yeah. a move now on the outside. This is Garcia hauling in the mix. And here comes Martin. He's been waiting and now he is there too. All this nonsense has brought him into the mix. You could see that Holland thought about split in the middle and then thought better of it. He's instead trying to cover off Martin and maybe get himself a launch here. And I think he may have. They're going to go side by side again down to Ferradura. And that blinking has got to make Ivan nervous. Poor Derek. He races right there, but nowhere to put the car as he watches on. Martin has the best show in the house. Here's another move to the inside, and he's going to get that done. Garcia now around Childs, but watch the drive off for a time. Boy, Garcia really likes that corner. If I'm Holland with all this back and forth that those two ahead of me have, I'm backing up the junction to get the biggest launch I possibly can, take both of them, and then try to run away as they continue to fight with each other. It won't necessarily be guaranteed to work, but that's the best plan I've got for him right now because he was really at risk with how hard they were fighting. All this going on behind Sonny Ketchum who has a three second plus lead over Isubio. Oof, that was a Front bad exit off of the junction. Sorry, Bill. Uh, bad exit second. off the junction for Childs. Go ahead. Here comes a peek from David Payton on the inside going into corner number one. He wants to get around Isubio and he's going to get the pass made up in second and the pass is done. Take another look at this one. Asubio wants none of that. He wants the spot back. Does not get much of a run, though. Kind of pulled out early. I don't know if there's going to be much momentum. It's going to open up the door for Coimbra now to really start coming. He may get both of them. And he's not going to force the issue. Right on board. Looking ahead. Here comes a pass. He's going to make it on the outside of the horseshoe. Nope. hanging right with him and this is probably something where Marcello kind of knows he doesn't have the pace to chase down Sonny he's watched that gap increase and he doesn't need to throw away the race by being uber aggressive at this point he's got seven minutes left to go kind of watch to see what Peyton can do set him up and uh, make sure that you can finish this race ahead of him Some nice racing up front. Everyone's had their chance to make a pass. We've seen Roy Combra get in there, mix it up a bit. Kono Miwa has been watching the entire show. He certainly has, and he's put himself in a great position. Just not sure 
if he'll be able to do anything unless he starts to get by Coimbra and really get onto the back of these top two. If he sits back in that the fourth place in the train, he's probably not likely going to be able to slingshot by more than one or two cars, not all three for sure. Hayden is first into corner number one ahead of Vesuvio. Again, the fluorescent blue machine at Coimbra right on the trunk of Vesuvio. He's been fun to watch. Eusebio's got to run, and Peyton's going to the inside to defend. Outside passes around this corner don't really work out too well most times, but he's going to hang tight, Bill. That's going to give an opportunity now for Coimbra with some momentum. Subio on the outside of the horseshoe. They're going to go too wide here. This is going to be interesting if Coimbra puts it in there, and he does. The door was open. He comes in. They do not touch. Nice shot from the blue machine. Staying off the Subio. I thought, he, I thought Eusebio was going to stick his nose in there. Peyton's going to go side by side up to the Ducks, Bill. He's got the inside. Marcello can't pull the over under because here comes Coimbra to try and take advantage. Off in the grass for Marcello, but he keeps it going straight. Now they get back into a single fire line, but they're nose to tail and the draft is coming. And Just under five minutes. They've been fighting so much that Cerati is starting to catch them. The sixth place car is making it a six car train now. Cerati was fighting with uh, Capolito for a while. They've settled down to try to get into the mix. Here we go up front. This could be three wide. Watch the momentum from Coimbra on the high side. Payton protects the inside. Marcello started lifting, but it's going to bite him. Look at Coimbra. If he can keep his momentum off, off here, which is hard when you come in shallow to that second apex, he could have it. And I think he managed to do it. Miwa loses a spot to Cerati now. Cerati trying to look at this. Cerati Ooh. wants to get them all. He's got a momentum. He's going to put it through the middle. I can see it coming. There it is. He backs out. Careful, boys. This is where drivers like Cerati have got to be careful. Actually, everybody's got to be careful because everyone's got their own agenda and you can't have eyes everywhere. When everyone's making these, these dips and dives in different locations, uh, you can suddenly find yourself moving over when you didn't realize someone had their nose in and turned both of you. That was really a great job from Miwa there as, as Cerati backed out of the three wide incident. Miwa gave him lots of room to get into his trunk. Hayden, Coimbra, Isubio, Cerati, Miwa, Capolito, your six car battle for second position. I wish we could go there, but it's probably Mumalitas has caught up to those other drivers. If we have time, we'll peek in there. He's going to be getting some guys. Action everywhere. We'll take a real quick peek. Here's Mumalitas. It won't be long until he gobbles these guys up, assuming his car is still running well. It seems to be running decent enough. It's just he lost so much time in those first two incidents that there was never any hope yeah. for the Greek driver. Nothing going on up front as the six car train is on the straight. Two and a half minutes of racing to go. Go back up into second position now. There was a little bit of a touch between Peyton and Coimbra through turn one. They get away with it, but Rui is getting ultra aggressive. Just a tick over two minutes to go. Yasubio making a move on the outside. Not going to happen. They head down into four. Leader will get the white flag at the line. Sonny Catcher looks to pick up his fourth win. He still has not locked up the championship even with this win. Certainly going to make things a little bit easier. Yeah. The main driver that he had to worry about today, as I said, Mumulidis, was gone within the first lap. All he had to do was, was cruise today, essentially. Seven seconds is 
Canchin ahead of this two six car battle for second. All right, Joe, make a pick. Who's going to get second? Oof. This is tough with the way that some of the moves they're making with those cars up at the front. I feel like it could go south easily. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Miwa. I feel like Miwa's a dark horse. Miwa sitting back there. He has been patient, just waiting for the disaster to strike in front. I like the fluorescent blue car of Rui Coimbra. He's really been putting on the show, number five, and here he comes right now on the back of Payton. He sees the white flag. Payton again protecting the inside. Look at Coimbra, kind of pin him down in there. Then at the very end, Coimbra will pull out so he gets a good angle into one. Subio coming in there, got to get him woed up. Almost three wide there with Eusebio. Oh, and he gets a little bit of a bump from Cerati. Cerati had the speed. Unfortunately, there was a car in the way. Cerati has to back off. He loses all the momentum. Now here comes the pass for second. The defensive line from Coimbra. He's going to make Peyton go around the top side. They stay too wide out there. This is going to be a great opportunity for Asubio to get in there. Wow, that was brilliant by Peyton. He was helped out by the fact that Coimbra stayed as shallow as he did. If he tracked out more, I don't think Peyton would have kept that spot. Oh, a little touch. Now keep an eye on the leader. We can stay here for right now. Leader heading into Duckbill. Plenty of time. We'll stay on this battle. Peyton out in front. The Subio Coimbra has brought them all back in. Oh, Miwa and getting antsy. Miwa gets in the back of Capolito. So there goes one of them. We can stay here. Canchin just getting into Junction right now. It'll be a while till he gets up there. Coming around. One more corner for these guys. Let's jump up to our leader real quick. It is round number 10, in the advanced Mazda Cup. Fourth win of the season goes to Sonny Kanchin. Let's go ahead and look back at what's gonna happen for second. Here we go. Battle for second, here comes Coimbra. Miwa, up in front though, it's gonna be Peyton side by side with Asubio, who got it? Asubio. It was Coimbra. No, I don't. Or is 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 Eusebio? Yeah, yeah. sorry. It's Sevio by, by boy. You got to go too many decimal points. Two, two one thousand. One thousandths of a second. Thanks, Joe. Wow. Yeah, my my timing and scoring jumped around right as they crossed. <laughs> uh, Coimbra went off uh, all the way back. There you see him just kind of recovering as they come off the junction. He took it way too wide, trying to get himself the launch, and unfortunately, it did not pay off. And as they come across the line, they were followed by Serrati, and then there was a battle back there with Miwa getting the best of Coimbra. Poor Coimbra, he has to settle for sixth. All right, the racing is over here in South America. But you know how this works. Our broadcast is far from done. We're going to take a short break. We'll come back to run down the entire finishing order, hand out Queen of the Ball Award before we talk to some of the drivers and put a lock on the gate. Back in a few.
the cyberspace get to your place? Well, that's thanks to the iRacing Esports Network. This is the Global, State, Global, Race, Global Sim Racing Channel's coverage of the Advanced Monster Cup Strength and Field Event Round Number 10 from Interlagos. The results are in. Let's give them to you right now. Picking up his fourth win of the season. Sonny Ketchy, if he can, and secures his point lead a little bit more. Marcello Isidio comes home in second as he fends off David Payton by two one thousandths of a second. Arturi Serrati gets the fourth position. Kotomiwa rounds out your top five. Back after your top ten. Rui Coimbra was all over the place, as far up as second, as far back as sixth. That's where he finishes. Rodrigo Capolino charged his way up to the front guys, but could not get around any of them. Ivan Garcia bests Derek Holland for eighth. Holland takes ninth, and Ionas Mumaludis gets up into tenth. Joe? Eleventh was Lee Martin, and Bobby Childs finishing in twelfth. We saw have some a little fun out there. Federico Barrera finishes thirteenth. Kevin Shea, 14th, Joao Maruska in 15th, and then Ricardo Gasparete was the last on the field. Tyler Vickery was a no start today. And now before the driver interviews, it's time for the fan favorite segment, Queen of the Ball. What it takes to be Queen of the Ball is undefinable, but we know it when we see it. And the award salutes Queenie, a fan and supporter of this series and this broadcast. And we thought that we should give it to the guy who picked up three spots, came home in fourth. We don't know much about him. Arturi Sarati gets the Queen of the Ball Award. Congratulations to Arturi. With that said, it's interview time, and I have the pleasure of being able to talk to our race winner, picking up his fourth win of the season. It is Sonny. Catch me if you can, Chin. Sonny, congratulations on another win. Once uh, once you broke away, it was just, uh, you had the fastest time. Hey, Chip. Yeah, I, I got to love the, the thing about this track is uh, once you're in that uh, state of flow, um, it's all uh, four wheel scare the cockadoos from King to East to you and do move. <laughs> there you go. You did what you needed to do. Now, we've done the math. We don't think you're home free yet. You're still in jeopardy if something goes south on you. Uh, let's talk about the next round. We're going to look ahead. I think we go to Daytona next time. That's got to be probably not one of your favorite tracks, right? Uh huh. Yeah. Well, <laughs> considering the drafts and uh, what happened yeah. earlier in the races, yes, yes, it is definitely a challenge. But uh, uh, hopefully, we'll play nice with each other and um, and uh, we'll make it to the finish. As you said, uh, that's what keeps this series in interesting. Is that uh, uh, you just got to make it count. There are three more to go, and Daytona isn't going to be easy. Hey, let me get into your head on this one. Without pit stops, it kind of changes the the dynamic of the race where really there's no reason to drop into second and save fuel. I got to figure if you're in second, it's probably not because that's where you wanted to be, right? You, you would prefer to be out in front on these short sprints. Yeah, you, you prefer to be out in front and uh, keep the gap going. Uh, but, but, you know, um, if you're second, uh, that would also mean that um, – uh, you don't want to feel any pressure, and especially the start of the race. Uh, you don't want to uh, get into any risk and uh, tap and uh, get yourself in a um, in trouble. Um, so, not to stand your race early. So, that also plays in your mind. Now, uh, the big thing I was wanting to take it easy. If I'm second, I'm fine. I didn't want to get into the lead, so that's why I stayed behind a bit. But once I knew that I'm a bit consistent and I got the lead, and uh, I saw. Uh, the gap increase behind me, uh, I saw side by side action going. <laughs> so, uh, helped me a bit, and then I uh, gun, I, I kind of uh, went for it. So, uh, I think uh, it it's, uh, depends where you are, and and if you're consistent and confident on this track, then you're in that state of flow. You just go for it. Well, you had it all from qualifying all the way through to the race. Congratulations on the win today, your fourth of the season. You get a little bit more of a gap between you and the guys who are chasing you. Good luck the rest of the way. There's only two left. Thanks, Sue. And uh, shout out to everyone. Joe, Sean, see ya. Gotta love the race drivers that shout out to the rest of the team here. And with uh, that final interview, I believe that's going to do it for us here on the Global Sim Racing Channel. So let me thank everybody who made this possible. Let's start with the guys in the Advanced Monster Cup community, and especially the sheriff, Jordy Fike. Now, Jordy wasn't here with us tonight, but he does a lot to make sure that this, this series is organized and we're able to broadcast. So thank Jordy for all the work you do. On screen now are just some of the equipment software used to stream cyberspace into your place. 
June Lalonde provides our iconic music. See the screen to how to get a hold of more of her great work. If you like what you saw, well, we'll be back in one week for the penultimate round. That's going to be another 25-minute sprint. We talked about it with Sunny. It's going to be from Daytona. Boy, that's going to be a dogfight. TSRC via IESN will bring you all the action sliding across your screen now or some of the upcoming broadcasts on GSRC. So check those out and mark them down on your calendar. If you want to get a hold of us, I got options. How about GlobalSimRacingChannel.com or go to social media, Twitter at GSR Channel, Facebook at Global Sim Racing Channel, and of course, Instagram at GSRC underscore Ram. Also, if you've done so yet, become a YouTube subscriber by heading over to our YouTube page and hit that big red button. Finally, on the half of the entire crew that uh, Sonny just thanked, that would be Joe, Sean, and Dougie. I'd like to thank all of you for watching as we once again Again, see Sonny Kanchen pick up another win. Round 10 here at Interlago. So that said, we're off to have fun storm of the castle. So until next time, race clean, race hard, and we'll see you on the track.